Hi! Welcome to Crafts with Ash DIY and Decor. My name's Ashley and today I cannot wait to bring you some spooky Hocus Pocus themed tiered tray DIYs. My four-year-old has recently become obsessed with the Hocus Pocus movie and I think she's actually going to be one of the Sanderson sisters for Halloween. So of course in our house it's just a bunch of Hocus Pocus. First, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that little notification bell so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. Also, hit the drop down menu and click all so you're notified about all notifications. Then jump on over to Instagram and Facebook and like and follow me there to join my crafting community. You'll get to see behind the scene content I know you okay, don't want to miss. Okay, let's get started with these Hocus Pocus themed DIYs. Fair warning, this one's kind of a long one, so grab a cup of witch's brew, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. So I decided since this is going to be Hocus Pocus themed, I really wanted to make a very cool tiered tray. I was on Pinterest and came across this Grandin Road tiered tray that looks like a broom and a broomstick, and how awesome is that? But for $149, I thought I could maybe use some supplies from the Dollar Tree and attempt it myself. And let me tell you, I absolutely loved how this came out. So come, we fly. So to begin making this, I'm going to use a black glass bowl from the Dollar Tree. And I'm also going to be using this funnel. Now it comes in a pack of three and I'm using the middle size funnel. So the first thing I had to do was I actually had to cut the funnel part off because I only needed the bigger part. <laughs> so I hope that makes sense. So you can see that I'm just cutting it down. I did actually go to my saw and cut it down and then I'm just now using my scissors to trim it up. What I wanna do is I wanted to make the bowl a little bit higher so the broom part was higher. So I am just evening, evening it all out. <laughs> was that even a word? and making it even and I'm sanding it down and then I'm going to use my super glue and hot glue to glue this on top of the bowl and this is just going to add some height for when we go ahead and create the broom at the bottom so again I'm just going to use some uh, hot glue and the super glue for that instant hold and permanent hold and then attach the funnel to the top. Now I did let it set for a little bit because you absolutely want to make sure that the glue is dry. So after that I took this luau skirt and I purposely kept this skirt from uh, summer because I knew I would be doing this DIY but you can of course just use raffia you don't have to have the skirt so all I'm doing is just hot gluing it around the top of the funnel part. Now you can see that it's long, so what I'm gonna do is cut it down and just keep wrapping it around to make layers. Cause you can see kind of to the left, there's a, a big hole there. It kind of looks like it was cut at some point. So I'm just gonna do this until I feel like the broom part is full enough. So I'm just gonna go around and around and uh, make sure that you know it's all covered. So I'm really just taking my time and I am using a lot of glue for this because I really want to make sure that it is, you know, very stuck down. So I am, yep, just applying a lot of glue. Now you can use E6000 or super glue if you would want to, but I, I don't know, I found that hot glue was fine. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually, because obviously you can see that the luau skirt is too long, so in a minute after I have this all glued down, I'm actually going to raise it up on a, on a basket, and then I'm going to kind of give it a haircut and cut off the bottom. So you're gonna see that coming up in just a second, and that way it made it all even. Okay, so now this is where I say I'm gonna raise it up, and now I'm gonna go ahead and just chop, chop, chop. Now the length that I'm going to is the bottom of the bowl. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and just give it a haircut. We kinda have like a cousin it situation going on here, so we're gonna make this look more like a broom. Now this was something that, when I first looked at it, I really had to think hard about how I was gonna do this. I needed something 
obviously really stable because it's a tiered tray and we're going to be putting stuff on it. Now, so I, yeah, like I said, I just really had to think about how this was going to happen. And when I saw that black bowl, I knew that was perfect, but then I needed some height to it. So I literally just walked around the Dollar Tree looking for anything. And then I came across those funnels, which I thought was perfect. So now I'm just kind of finishing up giving it a haircut. And you can still see that there are some bare spots. So what I did with, was with the raffia that I cut off, I doubled it up. And now I'm just going to go through and hot glue it to those bare spots. Now, as you can see, I did leave the top of the funnel open because that's what we're going to glue our plate on top of. So just like here, I'm just going through, taking pieces of raffia and just filling in any holes. Now, sometimes I went and hot glued right on the string up top, the little twine that has the other raffia wrapped around it, or I just simply hot glued it to the bowl itself to fill in the holes. So I just did that until it was as full as I needed it to be and all the black, all of the black bowl was covered. So real quick, I want to take an opportunity to welcome you to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for choosing to stop by today. I hope you choose to stick around with me for a while by hitting that subscribe button. If you're returning, thank you so much. You already know I love and appreciate all of you. And I'm so happy that you keep coming back and for all of your support. And I'm so appreciative and just thank you so much. I am so close to 10,000 subscribers. And once I get there, I'm going to do a giveaway. So make sure that you are subscribed and that notifi notification bell is on so you will get a notification when that giveaway is posted. Okay, so once I had my entire bowl covered with the raffia, I am just taking a baby wipe, dipping it in some Waverly Antique Wax, and basically just brushing it on. Now, the broom on the original piece was darker. So that's why I opted to make this one darker, and I'll be honest, I like it darker. So I just basically just covered it all up. And I just did this, and I kind of did layers. Like, I, I went around to the first layer. I would lift that layer up, do the second layer. And um, just, yeah, I, I mean, it was impossible for me to get every piece of raffia, but... And I kind of do like the two-tone effect to that as well. But I just think that, you know, oh gosh, I can't wait for you to see the final product. It came out so cute. So then I just kind of, you know, just stained the raffia, cutting it down, making sure it looks how I want. Okay, so for the tear tray parts, I'm actually using these Malamine plates that I got from Target. They were each 50 cents, but I do know that the Dollar Tree also sells plates. I just would not get anything heavy. I would just get like... You could get a, even a plastic plate and spray paint it and spray paint it whatever color you want. So here's what I'm doing. I, for extra support, decided to glue down a wood square plank. But I realized that I really had to cut the top of the funnel down to make it even with the top of the raffia. So, because it didn't actually, it wasn't going to work if I didn't. So right now I'm taking my knife and I'm just kind of cutting it. That way it is, like I said, it's all even with where the raffia starts. And then it'll give me a good surface for me to hot glue and glue that on. So again, I'm going to use my hot glue and super glue and put that square right on top. Now, so it would blend in, I did go in with some black acrylic paint, and I'm going to paint around the edges of the square, and then I'm going to paint the bottom. So I did, but first I, I reinforced it by going around the bottom and putting more hot glue. And then as you saw, I did hold it there for, you know, quite a while until the glue set up. You really want to make sure it's dry. So now, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and paint the edges. You don't have to paint the top. I just use that as a palette to put my the paint on. So I just painted the pat the uh, around the edges and and at the bottom. And just make sure that it's all painted and that way it blends in. 
Now you can use acrylic paint, chalk paint, whatever you have. Okay, so after that, I went ahead and wiped the rest of the paint off, and now I'm going to use my hot glue and super glue and glue down this plate. There we go. Okay, now again, I am pushing down on it to make sure that it is fully adhered. So I do hold it for several minutes. Now to give it more weight, I added some paint bottles and these were pretty full paint bottles. And I'm just gonna add those on top to you know weigh it down so the glue will set. Oh gosh, I cannot wait for you to see. Okay, so next I took this dowel rod and my dad had given this to me, but if, but you can use a plunger stick and do the same exact thing. So what I needed to do first was find out how tall I wanted that first tier to, tr to be. And I decided that I actually liked the length of the bottle. So what I'm doing right now is measuring the length of the bottle just like that because I liked the height of that. So then I took it to my miter saw and I cut it down. And now again, by using hot glue and super glue, I'm going to glue this to the middle. Now here's the thing you really want to watch because I actually had to take this off and do it again. I don't know if I show it, but I did. You want to make sure that this stick right here is in the middle of the broom so it looks like it's all one piece. The first time I did it, it was not even, so it looked weird because it was offset from the broom part at the bottom. So you do wanna make sure that it's even, see, I'm, oh, I did show it. I have to take it, I had to take it off and reposition it, that way the stick was right in the middle of the broom part. So now I'm just going through and I'm gluing it on again to make it even and to make it actually in the middle. So now once that's on, I'm going to add my bottles again and weigh it down. And now I'm going to put hot glue and super glue on the top of that stick, put my plate on, and again, you wanna make sure that this top stick is even with the bottom stick and the broom. I hope that's making sense. So right now I just put my bottle on top to weigh it down. So with that other part of the dowel rod, I actually cut it at a 45 degree angle because if you look at the original, that's how it's cut. But then when I cut it off, it exposed a lighter wood. So after I sanded it down, I'm just taking my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm just staining it and it ended up being the same color. So if you do use the plunger stick, do the same thing. Dip a baby wipe into the Waverly Antique Wax and stain your stick if you want it a little darker. Now what I'm doing is I just brushed on some black paint to kind of make it look dingy and old. And now I'm gonna do that to the stick that I had already glued on. I didn't think to do that until after I glued it on, of course. So now I'm just going back and just rubbing on some black paint. And that was the black paint that was on the baby wipe that I used to wipe off that square piece. I hope this is all making sense. After that, I added some super glue and hot glue to the top of that plate. And again, I'm going to add something to the top to weigh it down. And I let this set completely overnight. Now, here's the thing. You're going to have to wait until the very end to see the final reveal of this broom. Okay, so... I am taking part in a minis challenge hosted by Crafted by Corey on YouTube. She has so many great DIYs and I love taking part in her challenge every month because if you know me, you know that I absolutely love and have an obsession for tear trays. So this fits right in to my decor and my DIYs. I'm gonna have the link to her page listed down below. Also, there's gonna be a playlist, so many, many crafters are gonna take part in this. I will have the link to the playlist listed down below as well. Be sure to hop around and check out all of the DIYers because I know that they're gonna come up with some amazing things. All right, well, now that our tear tray is made, it's time to add some spooky DIYs to go on top. So I picked up this little snow globe maker, like you're supposed to make a snow globe out of it, and it's a bulb. So I decided that this would be perfect to make a cauldron. So what I'm doing is I'm just hot gluing three little square beads that I got from the Dollar Tree at the bottom, so that way my cauldron will be able to stand up. And I just hot glued them like in a triangle, 
pattern and then I'm going to paint this entire thing in black acrylic paint and I did have to give it a few coats. Next, after my paint was dry, I decided that I wanted it to look like potion was kind of dripping out of my cauldron. So I'm just gonna take my hot glue gun and I'm just going to make some drip marks going down. And I'm also going to put a bunch of hot glue around the rim of my cauldron as well. So I'm gonna do long drip marks, I'm gonna do short drip marks. So I'm just gonna go all the way around just to create that, that spilling over look. After that, I'm gonna take this little plastic piece that came in the little snow globe, and I'm gonna push that back in, and then I'm gonna take these leftover eyeballs and start hot gluing them in in the on top of the plastic piece. I wanna create like bubbles, like it's bubbling out. So I'm just gonna hot glue three of them together. And it, if you don't have the eyeballs, you can always use ping pong balls or other styrofoam balls. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I know that Dollar Tree does sell sty the little styrofoam balls too. Then to fill in the spaces, I'm gonna use this vase filler that I also got from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna hot glue all of these little guys in there too. And I'm just using different cups different sizes now I'm using all the white ones because I'm gonna paint this so I thought it would be easier to paint but you can use whatever color you you have because obviously you're gonna paint over it so I'm just filling in all the little holes just kind of make it look like it is boiling over All right, after that, I'm gonna take my lime green paint and I'm just gonna paint all of my bubbles. I'm gonna go around the rim of that plastic piece and then I'm going to paint all of my hot glue drips too. <laughs> this project was so fun to make but yet it was so simple as well <laughs> after my paint dried I'm gonna take this decal that I cut from my Cricut and it says I put a spell on you and I'm going to go ahead and place it on the front of my cauldron now if you don't have a Cricut that's okay you can use rub on transfer stencils stickers you can handwrite it you can print something off of the computer and Mod Podge it on there are many different alternatives to having a Cricut Then to add a little spooky touch, I went ahead and dry brushed some black acrylic paint all over my lime green bubbles and the potion dripping out of my cauldron. And I really love the touch that this added. I think it added dimension, but also like I said, it gave it some spooky vibes. So this was so cute. And like I said, this was extremely fun to do as well. So as you can see, I'm just kind of using my finger too to rub it in and to make it look creepy. And here is our little spooky cauldron. How fun. 
All right, for the next DIY, I am going to do the stacked books. So I'm going to start off with this crate that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to paint the top of the crate, which is actually the bottom of the crate, but you know, <laughs> the top of my books with orange paint. And then I'm also going to paint the first little slat, I guess, on the side with orange paint as well. Then I'm going to take my yellow paint and I'm going to use that to paint the middle slat of my books. And then for the third one, I'm going to paint that in purple paint. When I was researching, you know, Hocus Pocus DIYs, it seemed like purple, orange, and yellow were the significant colors for Hocus Pocus. So those are the colors I chose to do too. And I really love how they all look together. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and paint my last slat in the purple. And I did give each one of these two coats because I wanted them to be very vibrant. <clears throat> so then after, now I am paying attention to trying to not get any paint in the little indents in there because after it's dried, now I'm going to go back, take a really small brush and I'm going to take black paint and brush inside of those little slats. I wanted it to look like they were three separate books. So that's why I'm adding the paint to give it a little bit of division there. So I'm just taking my time and just coloring it all in. So after my lines were all filled in, I took that makeup sponge again and I'm just going to dry brush some of that black paint all around my book again to add that spooky creepy factor and I really loved how this added a lot of dimension to these books too Now I did pay attention to the edges and the sides because I really wanted to make those a little darker next I'm gonna flip it on its side and I'm going to paint each of the sides with my plaster chalk paint so I'm making sure not to get any of the paint, you know, the front of the books or the top. And I didn't even worry about the back. A lot of times my tiered trays are up like in a corner or something. So the backs are never seen. So that's why I don't even worry about backs. Now, if I knew that this was going on a table or something, I definitely would have, you know, painted that because I, you know, you would have been able to see it from all around. But I know that this one, I know where this one's going. It's going in a corner. Okay, so after all my paint was dry, I cut out the words amok, amok, amok from my Cricut and I'm just going to apply those on. Again, you can use stickers, stencils. If you go back a little bit in my videos before I got my Cricut, I made a ton of these books and you can see how I put the lettering on there without having a Cricut. So then to make it look like book pages, I'm just taking that makeup sponge and dipping it in Waverly Antique Wax and I am just going back and forth horizontally to, you know, make it look, like I said, like uh, book pages. So I really loved how this came out. Now I'm going to sand it down to just kind of blend in everything. And I wanted to add something to the top, but if you watched my last video, you heard me, or one of my recent videos, you heard me say that I can't find any Halloween ribbon anywhere. So I just left it blank for now. All right, moving on to our third, no, I guess it would be our fourth DIY. I picked up this pack of witch hats from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to need three of them, of course, one for every Sanderson sister. And first, I'm going to take some spackling, and I'm going to cover the holes on each one of my hats. Once the spackling is dry, you just simply sand it down so it's nice and smooth. And now that they are smooth, it is now time to paint. So again, I'm gonna paint one in purple, one in yellow, and one with orange. And I did give two coats to each one, just to make it a little bit more vibrant. Now here's a little tip. 
so you don't get your fingers all dirty, you can use a skewer to actually paint these pieces or any kind of small pieces like this. So now I'm gonna paint my orange hat and then I'm gonna go in and paint my yellow hat. Again, one for each Sanderson sister. I really loved these colors. I thought that they were really, really, really cute. I love them all together. Okay, so next I'm gonna take this little box, little stand, I guess, or box sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. And what I need to do is I actually only need half of it. So I'm gonna take it out of its wrapping and then I'm going to go in with a knife and right where that block is, where you can see where you're supposed to hang it, I'm gonna cut on one side of that block. And now this did, you know, take a little elbow grease <laughs> to get it cut down, but then I finally did get it cut down and it kind of fell apart, so you're gonna see that I have to glue it back together, but in the end, it just looks like a big box that I, you know, you would never have known. So I'm just taking my time, I'm using this, this, um, box cutter and I'm just going to cut it down. So I kept going in between using this knife and the scissors to cut it and what I found actually is if you cut the sides first, so you see I'm I'm cutting this side and then I flipped it, now I'm cutting the other side and now I'm using my scissors and then it kind of just snapped off. So now I'm gonna peel the paper off as much as I can. If I don't get it all off, that's okay. I'm gonna trim it down, making sure that it's all even, it's all flush to, flush to, flush <laughs> to all the sides. Then, like I said, that one piece broke off. So I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue it back on. Now, I liked this pattern right here that the sides were on, but I am gonna paint the top in just a minute. Now you can see that it's actually longer on two sides, so I am going to have to um, cut that down. But I did have to take off that other side, that other little piece from the other end, because of course I have to close my box. So now I'm just cutting it down, because it did end up a little longer. And now I'm going to hot glue all the pieces back together. All right, so now that my box is all glued back together, I'm going to paint the top with just some black acrylic paint. All right, so I let my box dry, and now I'm going to hot glue a little wooden block behind each one of my witch hats, and then I'm going to paint the blocks black so that way it blends in. Now I'm doing this because obviously I want my little witch hats to stand, so I just thought that these little blocks were perfect for that. And then after they're all glued on and painted, we're going to attach them to the top of our box. So the top of our box is actually technically going to be the side of our box. So the black part that I just painted is the front. So I'm lining two up and then putting one in the middle. And actually, I think the orange one was supposed to be in the middle because I think that's supposed to represent Winnie and she's like the head sister, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, don't quote me on that. I don't know, but I just thought of that right now. All right, so now I'm just kind of touching it up but I'm also taking that brush and it has black paint on it and I'm just kind of adding some detail around the edges of my hat I'm just brushing it on again to add that spooky factor
And next I'm gonna take this decal that I printed for my Cricut and it says, sisters. <laughs> I should have my daughter say that because she says it really funny. Anyways, so I'm just going to put that on. Now, as you can see, it did kind of rip the paint a little bit. No big deal. I just went back and I took a smaller brush and just repainted over it. Again, if you don't have a Cricut, you can just use stencils, rub on transfers, stickers, you can handwrite it whatever kind of method you have for um, putting words on things. So then after that, like I said, I'm just gonna go back and touch it up. I think this sign came out so cute. Now, I was gonna add bows and everything, but honestly, I just left it like that. I just thought that it was good enough. I did not wanna take away from the colors and the fact that it is a witch hat, so I think that this turned out just perfect. Then to uh, make sure my sticker stayed down, especially since they kept pulling off because of the paint came off, I did go ahead and put a layer of Mod Podge on the stickers. And there we go. All right, for my next DIY, of course, we have to have the Black Flame Candle. Now, this candle is a battery-operated candle that I actually got from Dollar General. This was $3, and... I could not find for the life of me, and I went to several different Dollar Trees, their battery operated candles in this size. So I just opted for the Dollar General and it was fine. So I noticed when I was looking up the a picture of the Black Flame candle, it had a lot of like this brown writing or pictures around it. So what I did was just dry brushed some nutmeg paint all over like you just saw. And this one has texture on it, so or like a design. So it actually brought out that design in it. So I think that it made it look really cool too. So next I'm just gonna do the same thing we did with that potion or with the cauldron. And I'm just gonna drip um, hot glue all the way around the rim and then of course all the way down the sides. This is your friendly reminder that if you're loving what you see so far, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Not only does it really help my channel to grow, but it tells YouTube you love what you see and you wanna see more. Then after all that dried, I am just gonna go through and paint all of my hot glue. I'm gonna paint that black, and then, of course, you have to paint the flame because it is a black flame candle. <laughs> well, this one was super easy. It took me only minutes to make, but added such a great touch to the tiered tray, too. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna paint the black flame. And now we have the black flame candle. Don't light it. <laughs> okay, so of course we have to have the spell book. I am so sorry, I lost footage to this first part, but what I did was I grabbed a paperback book, and this is a small book because I, it needs to fit on a tiered tray. I took my spackling and I just rubbed it on with my finger, and then I let it sit for about three hours to dry. Now, personally, I would have let it dry overnight. I just didn't have that kind of time. I had to get this done, but I would let it dry overnight. Next, what I did was I took a kitchen sponge, and I'm going to dab the nutmeg paint all over this book, and I did paint the side as well. Now, I actually got this idea from Bargain Bethany. She is on YouTube. She's amazing. Uh, I think it was last year or the year before she made a spell book and she actually used tissue paper and Mod Podge, which added that texture, that raised look. I thought that that was absolutely brilliant, but I wanted to try something a little different and I thought about using the spackle and this worked really well too. So you could use either one you'd like, the either the tissue, the paper, I'm sorry, the toilet paper <laughs> method or the spackling. I will leave the link to that video of Bargain Bethany's in my description box so you can check out hers. Now everything else I did after this was completely all her, all credit goes to her. Basically I just watched how she made it and then just recreated it using the same items. So I, I just, cause why, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. She came up with the perfect way to make this. 
So next, after my black, um, or I'm sorry, my nutmeg paint was dry, I just went through and dry brushed some black. And you can still see a little bit of the white on there coming through from the spackle, so that gives it a really neat look as well. So I'm just going in, I'm going around the edges, going in all the grooves. And then I'm going to take a popsicle stick, and this is a regular size. I'm going to cut down the curved edges, and then I'm going to glue it to the side of the book, right where the binding is. So I'm gonna make sure that that's all hot glued down. And then I'm gonna take my silver metallic paint and I'm going to paint, give that a coat of the silver. Okay, so I wanna know, do you love the movie Hocus Pocus? Or what is your favorite Halloween movie? I am not a scary movie girl and it's weird because I do love Halloween so much. But I have to say mine is probably Halloween Town. Do you remember that one? <laughs> okay, so next I took another one of these eyeballs. And normally they have a hole at the bottom. This one didn't. So I had to use my hot glue gun to really get a hole in there. And then I just used my scissors and just cut the eyeball in half. So this is going to be the eye, obviously. <laughs> so now I'm just going to cut the first, the front part off. Then I just kind of sanded it down a little bit so it wasn't so rough on the bottom. And then we're going to hot glue that down to the other side of the book. So I'm just, I'm just using hot glue for all this. I saw that it, it, you know, it worked just fine, I think. Okay, so then I took that other half of the eye, I cut that in half, and then I cut it in half again because we're gonna make an eyelid. This, and then I'm gonna hot glue that down. Again, this is coming straight from Bargain Bethany because, you know, why reinvent the wheel, like I said. So after I glue that on, I'm just gonna go ahead and outline the eye with some hot glue now I mine is a um, mini hot glue you can see it's a detail hot glue gun I would actually use a regular hot glue gun because it may come out thicker so I had to go let like my first layer dry and kind of go over it a few times so it came out thicker if that makes sense so after I traced around the eye I did the snake on the silver piece and now I'm just going through and just making those stitch marks. And these are just random, just random little squiggle lines. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. And then see, once that was dry, I went again, I went over it one more time. And some, of, I think the snake I might have actually gone over three times because like I said, I really wanted that to be thick. And then again, I'm just gonna go over everything. Now, my, the book that I'm using it did come from the Dollar Tree. Like I said, it is a paperback book, but it is smaller than one of those regular size books. So I thought this was the perfect size because I was, you know, to, to put on a tiered tray. Okay, so now I'm going to use that other half of the eyeball. I cut that down a little bit. Now I'm going to hot glue the bottom eyelid on. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the stitching marks over the lines I just drew, or glued on. <laughs> and I was, you know, looking at a picture of this as I was creating this, but I have to say, this was so much fun to make. It really was. And my daughter loved it. She loved it. Okay, so now I'm going to take that silver paint and I'm going to paint over my snake. And then once the stitching um, glue dried, I'm going to take my sponge and I'm just going to dab all over the, the stitching marks. That way it all blends in, those lines that I drew. 
Now, that my sponge actually still had black on it too. So if you're seeing black go on, it's actually a mix of black and brown, but that was perfect because it just added more texture. I would have done that anyways. Okay, so then I'm gonna take a paintbrush and I'm going to paint his eyelids with that nutmeg brown paint. And then I'm just gonna dab some of that brown and black mixed paint on the snake. Now, I realized it was a little heavy here and it kind of took away from the silver. So I do end up wiping some of that off and then painting over it again with the silver. I really wish that I would have made that snake a little bit thicker. I don't know, I just felt like it needed to be thicker, but that's okay. Okay, so then I'm going to take my hot glue and I'm just gonna take or make a circle. I'm gonna outline the eye. And again, I probably did three layers of this one. So I let it dry and then did again. Now I'm just adding some detail. This is where it gets really fun because you can do whatever you, you know, what whatever you like and however you like it or want it to look. So here we go, I'm gonna add the next layer, and then let that dry. Okay, so there were like snakes in the corners, so I'm just gonna do my best. These definitely don't look like the actual spell book, but just make sure to put a head on your snake <laughs> at some point. And I just kind of made like little windy lines. I did my best. <laughs> now I'm just rubbing on some of that black. And then I'm going to go over the snake again. Okay, so now, or at least that's what I thought I was just about to do. <laughs> um, okay, so now that the ring around the eye is dry, I'm going to paint that with silver paint. And I do believe I go over the this ring around the eye one more time because I just wanted it to be a little thicker. Okay, now here I'm gonna go through and cover over my snakes again. Okay, so next I took a lime green Sharpie and I'm just painting the um, the eye color because it was not a yellow eye and I do think it was a darker green, but I didn't have a darker green Sharpie, so I just used what I had. And then, like I said, I did go around one more time with my hot glue and then once that dries, I'll paint that silver too. But then I'm gonna go and paint my, my other snakes in the corners. And then that third <laughs> uh, layer of glue dried, so I'm just painting that. And then I'm just going in and adding some black paint for a little bit more detail. So it's funny, I told my neighbor that I was making this and she's having a Halloween party next month and they're actually, uh, it's gonna be a Hocus Pocus theme. So she actually bought a big book from the Dollar Tree and asked me to make her one. So I'm super excited to get to do this again. Then I'm just kind of dabbing some of, black, some of that black uh, paint around the silver part of the eye and then on top of the snakes as well Okay, so then I took my um, makeup sponge and some Waverly antique wax and Some black paint and I'm just distressing the pages to make it look like it's dirty and it's old and antiqued So I'm just kind of dry, dry brushing that on And then I did go ahead and paint the binding of it brown. Now I think I cut the footage, but I did go ahead and dab some black paint on there. And there we go, there's the book. Okay, this is a little bonus one. My daughter loves Binks. Like she legit cried when he turned into a human because I don't think she understood that 
originally he was a human, <laughs> but um, she loves Binks. So I thought I would add Binks to the little tear tray. I got this little metal um, stand up cat from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just painting over all of the pink because I just, I wanted him to be an all black cat. And then I am going to kind of, you know, try to rip that bow off and it does come off. You just have to kind of bend it back and forth until it finally snaps. And I did leave his little eyes green. So I'm just trying to get that darn bow off. <laughs> and then I took this ba uh, pack of rings and I took a bat and I'm just gonna cut off the ring part and then hot glue this to his collar. I was gonna make him a tag that said Binks, but then I decided not to. But that was just a little bonus DIY. It really wasn't even a DIY. I just kind of, you know, turned it into Binks. But after Binks was done, they, all of these DIYs and the tray are complete. So now it's time for the final reveal. Okay, so here is my broom tier tray. Look how neat this turned out. Now I did go in with a black permanent marker and color in over all the hot glue on the actual plates. That way all the hot glue kind of blended in. But I love how this turned out. Now in the original they did have like orange plates or something. I just opted to go with black that way it just, you know, I don't know. I just wanted to go with black. All right, so now it's time to decorate it. So I am starting off with some spider web, and I'm just going to just put it on my plates, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to find the right angle here, so I keep moving the camera a little bit. But now I, you know, did know, I do know that a little bit goes a long way with these spider webs. So I'm really pulling it apart because I don't want big chunks. I like it when it's just like, I don't know how to describe it, just very loose and just really pulled apart. So I am stretching it a lot. And then I am kind of putting it over the side of the plate. And then of course up top, I'm gonna put it around the broomstick. And then, yeah, like I said, just put it around the sides and let it hang down. And then my ring kept getting caught on that <laughs> backdrop. <laughs> so, yep, I'm just kind of arranging the spider web exactly how I like it. Okay, so now it's time to add our DIYs. So to the top, I'm gonna add my, I put a spell on you cauldron to the back. And then I'm going to take my book and I'm showing you all the texture, that is so cool. And I'm gonna, it actually did stand up. Now it does fall a few times, so I might actually add a some tumbling tower blocks to the back. And then I'm gonna take my stacked books and put it right on top. That's another reason why I didn't put anything on the top of the books, like glue anything, because it would have covered the stuff behind it. All right, moving to the back, Binks is gonna go right to the back of the tray. And then I have this cute Hocus Pocus Ray Dunn mug that, I'm that I wanted to add as well. So I'm gonna add that to the left. And then I'm gonna take our black flame candle and it does light up. So I'm gonna put that right in front of our friend Binks. Next, I'm gonna take our sister's <laughs> sign and put it in the front. Then I found this pack of broom. Oh, just kidding, I'm gonna add the spider right in front of the candle. Just to add a little bit more fun things to the tray. Okay, now I found the, this pack of brooms and it's perfect because there's three, although I know that um, Mary uses a vacuum, <laughs> but still. I put those in the Hocus Pocus mug and then I just took a little bit more spider web and just kind of stuffed it in the mug too. All right, so now I'm just gonna add just little things, accessories. 
And so I added some black flowers, black leaves, and then I'm adding another little spider. You'll see that I kind of moved some things around. This little jack-o'-lantern came off of a pick from the Dollar Tree. I finally found pumpkins on sticks. <laughs> Took me long enough. So I'm just gonna add that spider actually to the top. And I decided to remove the um, flowers, just too big and it covered. And that pumpkin I thought went perfect there. And then this spider on top and now I'm just making sure that everything looks good and then just to add right next to it I have this hocus pocus mug with the witch legs and I thought it was so cute but you tell me what do you think I am obsessed with how the tear tray itself, the broom tear tray, came out and all of the decor on top. I can't even pick a favorite. I mean, if I did, I would have to say the book because, or the spell book, because it was just so much fun to make. I have to say I was pretty proud of myself. That was kind of out of my comfort zone to just you know paint something like that and it oh my gosh yeah you're just gonna have to try it because it was so much fun you're gonna have to let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite or if you think that you're gonna be attempting any of these DIYs I would love to know also don't forget to tell me do you love Hocus Pocus or what is your favorite Halloween movie or scary movie again like I said I think mine would have to be Halloween Town but you know I love the classic Hocus Pocus Nightmare Before Christmas too but I am not a fan of scary movies <laughs> but I am a big fan of Halloween as you well know well, I hope that you gained a ton of inspiration and ideas to create some spooktacular DIYs for this Halloween season. Like I said, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that little notification bell so you're notified when I upload new content. And don't forget, I have a giveaway coming up once I hit 10,000 subscribers. Also, a like would really be appreciated because it really helps my channel to grow. All right. Well, until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye.